Hey guys, so I'm, I'm making a video on uh, revision with electrochemistry and using past paper questions from the recent exams to explain some of the concepts. I tried making uh, much longer videos but I uh, just couldn't get the time to because it needed about 4-5 or five videos to explain all the concepts. I didn't have the time so I'm just doing a quick revision through the past paper questions. Selecting from 2016, 17 and 18 and so we're trying to helpfully, hopefully answer questions and help you answer them that involve electrochemical cells or predicting chemical reactions or even electrolytic, elect, electrolytic, electrolytic cell calculations through electrolysis like time and current and so on. But first we're going to focus on electrochemical cells. Uh, electrochemical cells are such where you have two half cells as shown right here and generally if they're, if they're set up to measure the standard electro potential of a particular half cell then one of the two half cells will have to be what we call a standard hydrogen electrode. In this particular case, if the, every half cell has two oxidation states. So if they're asking you to measure the electrode potential of the RN2, RN3 oxidation state, a half cell, so they've got the two oxidation states right here, the plus 3 and the plus 2. And for each half cell, there's an accompanying half equation, like Fe3 plus becoming Fe2 plus, for example. And so if that is the half cell that they want you to find the E04, the other half cell would have to be a standard hydrogen electrode whose half equation would be 2H plus plus 2E becoming H2 or half H2 plus electron becoming sorry, 1H plus electron becoming half H2, either or. So in this particular case, we've got the RN3 uh, half equation and the hydrogen half equation right here. It's always good to look at the data booklet to get the half equations. And this is the setup they have made. Now the things that they want you to be able to label are, so first, the guy that connects both the half cells is what we call the salt bridge. Its function is to complete the circuit by providing ions. And it provides ions and it prevents the buildup of charge. So its function is to provide electron uh, ions to prevent the buildup of charge or either of the two half cells. Now, what this is the standard hydrogen electrode. You would have to pass hydrogen gas here and the hydrogen gas would have to be passed at a certain partial pressure. So the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas here would have to be 180 and because that would be the standard conditions for gas. The metal used here to store the electrons when hydrogen undergoes this half equation, the metal is a platinum electrode. It's actually platinized platinum but like a rough version of platinum, but for now we can just write platinum electrode. And the solution has to be a 1 mole per dm cube acid, which contains H plus ions. So I will take 1 mole per dm cube HCl aqueous. No, 1 mole per dm cube HCl aqueous. Yeah, that's fine. Any acid where the H plus ions are 1 mole. So if you want to take H2SO4, I would suggest don't take that because it doesn't ionize. Okay, yeah, well, it does ionize, but yeah, it will not make twice as many ions and there's a whole complication. So whenever you've got to use hydrogen, just take HCr. Ionize is completely, take one mole of that. One mole per dm cube. And the, the, because this is the gas electrode, you have this whole bell jar here. And this is a site for this half reaction. And here is the other guy, the RN2, RN3. Now, I know some of you remembered left minus right, right minus left, all of that crap. Please ignore all of that. Just look at the diagram and see where everything fits. If they were asking you for the standard electropotential of a particular guy, that means one of them has to be a standard hydrogen electrode, and that's this fellow right here. So this must be your iron 3, iron 2 plus half cell. Now, because both the oxidation states here are aqueous ions, therefore the metal will have to be platinum. That's why. Because otherwise, one of the two states will have to be a solid metal. But if it's not, then we use the platinum electrode. And F is a mixture, not just one of the two, a mixture of both these solutions. Meaning, there is one mole per dm cube, let's say iron solution, let's say iron chloride aqueous. That is the iron 2 plus solution. And it's also made one mole per dm cube with respect to iron Cl3. Now, it's not like you took two separate one mole per dm cube equations and mixed them together because if you took equal volumes of two one mole per dm cube solutions and mix them together, the, vol the concentration will half because you're doubling the volume. So you have to make them up to one mole per dm cube in the same solution separately. So like adding, if you take one dm cube of water, add one mole of this salt and add one mole of this salt. Even though they're not going to ask you for that, this is what this means. 
So that's what you label them with. And you fill out this table right here with the same thing that I just filled out right here. All right. And then, and then when you set this up, you got to figure out the well, potential difference and the half equation and so. So how do I figure that out from the data booklet? So now the data booklet tells me that the iron 3, iron 2 equation K value is plus 0.77. Now, how do I read this? Well, the 0.77 will help me calculate the potential difference and the plus sign tells me the tendency of the equilibrium to shift to a particular side when connected across the standard hydrogen electrode. The plus means that this reaction was the one going forward while hydrogen's reaction was the one going backward. If this was negative, then this would be going, This if the negative would have implied that this reaction was going backward and the hydrogen was going forward. But because it's positive, this one was going forward and the hydrogen was going backward. Which means that at the, um, this electrode, at the iron 3 iron 2 plus electrode, the reaction taking place was iron 3 plus plus 1 electron becoming iron 2 plus. And if you and if this is going forward, that forward reaction is reduction. So basically, in this particular case, whatever, whatever reaction goes forward is the one that's reduction, not the right side, because sometimes they even flip the sides of how they draw. Also, the right side looking in this diagram is the left side if you were to look from behind the paper. So I don't try not to use left minus right or whatever else. Now but look at the two values and in this case hydrogen was zero zero so that doesn't determine anything this one was positive so this went forward hydrogen went backward and so this this going forward is written like this the hydrogen going backward would be written in a different form like the h2 becoming 2h plus plus 2e so therefore hydrogen is the one losing electrons and iron is the one gaining electrons so the electrons are going to travel from hydrogen to the iron electrode that's so this is the movement of electrons from hydrogen to iron and electrons go from an area of more negative to an area of less negative or from negative to positive so therefore that would tell me that iron is the positive electrode and hydrogen is the negative electrode and you can also learn that obviously the one that goes forward will be positive because that's the one gaining electrons and the one that shifts backwards is the one that's loose electrons and therefore that will be negative because the electrons will go from the negative to the positive or the electron will go from the one losing electron to the one gaining electrons so that's what's happening here so here the positive electrode is iron and the electrons are going from hydrogen to uh, iron electrode all right so that's how a cell is set up let me show you another example of a cell right here this is a cell set up between zinc and copper electrodes. Two half cells, copper and zinc, salt bridge, voltmeter. Now, the kind of things they can ask for is uh, the potential difference and the equations of the two electrodes. And which of them is a positive electrode, which of them is a negative electrode. So, first of all, for any half cell, you should isolate the two half equations that represent the two half cells in it. Now, this is the copper's half equation. And the zinc electrodes is zinc 2 plus plus 2e becoming zinc. That is this equation in purple minus 0 0.76. This is copied from the data booklet. This is the two equations that are used. Now, how does one determine everything that happens in a cell? So you look at the two values and you see which of them is the more positive value. Now, the more positive value would imply that that equation is favored to the right. In this particular case, so what's going to happen is that the copper equation is going to proceed to the right and that would be 0 0.34 value and the zinc equation is going to proceed to the left that becomes this now this value of minus 0 0.76 is the tendency of the forward reaction or the potential of the forward reaction but because it's negative it's favored backwards so it's going to go backward but when you write it going backwards the way this is written now realize that the moment the electrons are on the other side, I've flipped the equation. I've flipped the equation by going backwards. If I do that, I have to also flip the E0 if that's what I'm referring to. So the E0 or E0 is a standard. This, this is the way of standard writing it. So this would be the E0 of the zinc half cell. But the moment I flip the equation and I flip the sign, this is no longer the E0 of zinc. It is the E of this half equation, but not the E0. The difference is the not part. The E0 
refers to standard form and standard equations and this is a standard form of writing it but by flipping it like this and I'll, this would be just called the e of the zinc half cell and this is the e of the copper half cell which is also the same as the e naught because i didn't flip it but the equation for zinc was flipped backwards and so the e of that flipped equation is this and why am i doing that because there are two ways to find out the total cell emf first of all the this will be the two equations so this will be on the copper electrode that will be reduction so the copper is gaining electrons and zinc is losing electrons so that is oxidation now we can write the overall equation for the reaction the overall e naught of the or the overall e cell at the same time we can also figure out the electron transfer if copper is gaining electrons and zinc is losing electrons the zinc has to transfer this electron from because zinc is losing them and they're going to copper so they go from zinc to copper so this is the electron transfer from zinc to copper and the equation that goes forward is the one gaining electrons so that is positive and that's why copper is positive and the zinc is going backwards so that was negative and the electrons will go from there to there all right then also because copper is gaining electrons so that's reduction and reductions happen at the cathode so that's how it's determined the cathode and the anode not by the charges of the of the plates but by the type of reaction happening oxidation means that's the anode reduction means that's the cathode and the overall equation is the sum of the two half equations where the electrons balance out in this case copper 2 plus plus zinc becomes copper and zinc 2 plus and they balance out this way and the overall this is the overall cell equation the equation of the reaction and the emf of the cell can be done one of two ways either by writing the two half equations and flipping the one going backwards ka sign and then adding this up which is 1.10 volts or the emf of a cell can be calculated by the e naught of the equation that is going to go to the right hand side or let's say e naught of the equation going forward or right forward or right minus the e naught of the half equation that is going backward or left and that's the faster way the shortcut way of doing it the reason why we minus it is to compensate for not flipping it because if you look at this versus this there's no difference except for the doing it faster because if i apply this formula to this the e going forward the e naught of the equation going forward which is the word is going forward copper the e naught which is the way it's written in the data booklet for copper is plus 0.34 minus the e naught of the equation going backward not the e the e would be 0.7 because we, once it goes backward the sign changes but i've written e naught so e naught is minus 0.76 so the reason why we minus it is because we didn't flip it because we're writing in the so the, you could decide to either solve the question this way or this way and my job is to tell you both because in some cases they have given it flipped and added this is what i've been doing always this is just faster and this is what's written in most books so the kids get, end up using this so both ways will get the same answer 1.10 volts 1.10 volts that's how you do it not that the right hand electrode minus the left hand electrode that would be wrong in this case because a lot of people do that they learned it somehow that is the right hand side of the cell minus the left hand side which is zinc minus copper which is minus 0.76 minus 0.34 which will give you minus 1.10 and that is wrong the potential difference there is 1.10 that's the emf of the cell and the way to calculate that is from the e naught going forward minus of the e naught of the equation going backward or simply the e naught of the equation going forward plus the flipped e of the equation going backwards the flipping is what reverses the sign so this flipping here is the same as minusing here both will result in the same emf that's how you find out cell emfs we look at some of them in other past paper questions coming up so let's go back to the question now because so there's a part of the question where it says here that in another experiment iron 3 iron 2 cell was connected to a copper copper cell and they want to find the cell potential and now since they only want to find the cell potential i can do one of two ways but in both case ways i have to isolate the half equations the one for copper is copper 2 plus plus 2e becoming copper and that is the value of how much 
somebody know um, yeah it's plus point three four volts and the iron one is fe three plus plus e becoming fe two plus and that's plus point seven seven now in this case both are positive so how does one decide about the emf of the cell now you can they just wanted emf but we can do so much more we can know which goes forward which goes backward we can tell oxidation kind reduction kind we can write the overall equation and the emf we can do all of that so here first of all how do we decide which goes forward which goes backward if both are positive the more positive goes right or forward and the less positive goes backward now if i just want the quick answer the easiest answer for this would be the e cell is the equation going right ka e naught minus the equation going back ka e naught which is this minus this value and this will give you straight away 0.43 volts and that's the answer plus 0.43 volts the other way which is the, to understand that okay well this is going forward so its half equation would be fe3 plus plus e becoming fe2 plus and that is plus 0.77 and the copper going backward which is copper becoming copper 2 plus plus 2e and that is now because i'm flipping the equation i can flip the sign and once i flip the sign the e is a sum of these two not the minus but the sum this plus the negative value which will again give him plus 0.343 now i do not multiply it by 2 if because the voltages are not actual energies their ratios because if i look at this and i realize that oh let me find the overall equation the way to balance this would have been to balance the electrons this is gaining one this is losing two so you'd have to multiply the rn equation by two to get the right ratio and that would give you two fe3 plus plus two electrons to make two fe2 plus and then the electrons will cancel out and the overall equation would be two fe3 plus and copper becomes two fe2 plus and copper two plus that is the overall equation even though you multiply it by two you do not multiply this voltage ever by two because the voltage is ratio of joules per coulomb and even if the reaction happens twice the joules will be twice and the charge coulomb will be twice but the ratio will stay the same so whenever you have to multiply the equations you do not multiply the potentials for it so there are two ways of solving it this one is a little more complete because you get the equations and everything if they wanted that either or gets you the same answer though this is if they had asked for which goes forward which goes backward now in this case also this is the oxidation equation this is the reduction so copper undergoes oxidation iron undergoes reduction which means that iron is the cathode and copper is the anode electrons go from copper to iron you can tell it all from this equation right here all right now the next part of the question involves how does e naught vary with potential diff uh, with concentration and a simple application of Le Chatelier's principle. They're saying how does the e naught of nickel two plus vary with the the concentration? So the equation is this, and the value is minus two point five minus point two five. Sorry. Now this is measured at standard conditions, one mole per dm cube. Now. Anything that shifts the equilibrium to the right, sorry, if it shifts it to the right, will increase this value. And if it shifts to the left, it will decrease this value mag uh, mathematically. So if it increases this value and it's already negative, it'll become less negative. It's like a number scale. So, in, so if you think about a vertical number scale and you got zero, this value right now is at minus 0.25. So, if the equilibrium is shift to the right, the value will increase on this number scale, increase up. If it shifts left, it will decrease. So looking at this number scale, if it increases, if the if it shifts right, it will increase. Increasing meaning that it will become less negative because it's already negative. So here, what are they asking? State and explain how the E potential changes if the concentration is decreased. So now the, they are decreasing the concentration of this. How will that affect equilibrium? So if we decrease this, the equilibrium will shift backwards to make more of this because of Le Chatelier's principle. That's the explanation. And if it makes more of this, the equilibrium shifts left, meaning that this value will decrease. So it's already negative. It will decrease. It will become more negative. So the value will become more negative. And you'll say because the concentration of Ni2 plus will decrease and will shift the equilibrium. And I'm writing in short form. You can do that. She equilibrium left and therefore the value will decrease 
Now you can also mathematically calculate the decrease of E naught using the Nernst equation, which they have given here, and they're actually asking you to use the chromium equation to figure out what happens there mathematically for the exact value for the exact value. Yeah, so that value is minus point four one, and they're saying they want to find the new value given that E naught is minus point four one. And they're changing the concentrations to a certain concentration here, not one mole per dm cube. And the oxidized species and the reduced species. The oxidized species has the higher oxidation oxidation state, and the reduced species has the lower oxidation state. Because once you reduce something, the oxidation state decreases. So the E is the E naught, which is minus 0.41 plus 0 0.059 over Z. Z is the number of electrons being exchanged in the reaction. In this case, Z is how much? Only one. So I'll put one here into log of log of the whole thing, which is log of the ratio of the oxidized over reduced. The oxidized is the higher oxidation state. In this case, that is 0 0.6 and reduced is the lower oxidation state of 0 0.15. And then that ratio comes out to, by the way, 4 log of 4, blah, blah, blah. And you can solve it for the value. I don't have the calculator right now, but if you did, that would be the answer for this. Thank you. I'm going to put up videos one question at a time so that people can start revising this. All right. Thanks. Bye.